Hi there, these comments are for NP and this is Michael from BetterTofelScores.com and let's take a look at the email you sent me. So you said, hi Michael, thank you so much for your feedback and you are one of my online TOEFL course students. You're working on improving your speaking to 26 points. You say, could you please look at my transcript of my answer below? So I'm looking at it right now. In my opinion, living in the dormitory on campus is a lot better than living in an apartment off campus because it is cheaper and much more convenient. To illustrate, I remember when I was in college, I could not live, apply to live in the dormitory because it was full and I added this word at that time. And I'm going to combine these two sentences instead of beginning this sentence with so, but so I had to look for an apartment outside and it cost me double in comparison to living in the dormitory. Also, it took me about 30 minutes to commute to campus while my friends who were living in the dormitory could just walk to class. If I had lived on campus, I would have had, I would have had one more hour to spend on studying. Okay, so let's look at your question. You said, I was talking about the past, so I think it would be okay to say it took me about 30 minutes. Let's look at it. Yeah, okay, I agree with that. You say, is it correct? Yes. You say, I would change it to driving to campus took me 30 minutes, as you said, to be more clear. Okay, so you're, if you change it from, from it took me to driving to campus uh, took me 30 minutes, that's a little bit better, not just because it's clear, but it, it, you're showing that you're using a gerund phrase as a subject instead of a pronoun, which is a little bit more advanced grammar proficiency. So you say, after listening to your feedback, I know that it, it would make more sense if I just said, if I had lived on campus, I would have not, I would have not had to commute 30 minutes. Right, you can say that too. I mean, if I had lived on campus, I would have had one more hour, or if, if I'd lived on campus, I would have not had to commute the 30 minutes. Right, that might be better, because if you say it that way, I would have not had to commute. That ties back to what you just said a minute ago, so it creates a little bit more cohesion there. So I, I think part of the grammar here is, and I'm just going to do a quick review here and then I will stop this video, but when we're reviewing this, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, so if I say, So if I live on campus, I will not have to commute, right? So this is kind of what I call present possible condition, right? So I'm using, you can see here, I'm using the present tense here and the future tense in the independent clause to convey this type of implied reality. Now then, I'm gonna take a step more here and let's change this to present impossible, right? So if I do that, I will change live to lived, and then I change will to would. So the present impossible condition is if I lived on campus, I would not have to commute. So that's how I convey this type of present impossible uh, reality. Finally, let's take this idea, let's take it one last step, and we're going to now change this to a past impossible condition. In this case, we have the, the past perfect tense. I would not have there. So the past impossible here, if I had lived on campus, I would not have had to commute. So that this is the, the, the three types of conditional grammar structures you can use 
to convey present possible, present impossible, and past impossible conditions. And using this type of grammar on the TOEFL exam, I think is very helpful because it's definitely showing a wide range of grammar structures that you're using. You're showing you don't have any limitations. You can talk about all kinds of things, both real and unreal type conditions. And they will give you the IBT human raters and then speech rater. You're gonna get some big points for using this type of grammar during the speaking section of the TOEFL exam.